only say that, okay? I can only assume somebody was coming in here to guest host for the larger shows because they cleaned these, which is the first time in like two years. Yeah. Every time I walk in the studio, George, the song Coming In on a Wing and a Prayer comes to mind, okay? That's it. You got it, brother. You got it. <clears throat> Lots <laughs> and loaded boys and girls. <clears throat> so I take it I'm letting you do the live read tonight. Uh, you know what I'm doing? I don't have a copy of it. Well, what happened to the one you had? I left it. You <laughs> are you prepared to do the library? Oh, I'll have it. <laughs> that would be no. He's still, he's still, I'm still, I'm still not up to it. By the way, what, uh, did George have the one you did that he was? Yes, he has. But I guess it has to get sent through the channels to be approved or whatever. So he said you can put it in for next week. But I'm not here. Well, that's bullshit. We could run it during the show. Right? We could put it up on the board. <clears throat> Except we've already got so much stuff going on. <clears throat> uh, no, I'm, I'm not allowed to, uh, to play content now that's not gone through. Yeah, yeah, no, I get, but I could. Yeah, if you had it up on your screen. Yeah, I could. I didn't even think about that. But you're well, right. I'll have them put it in. Yeah, and I get I mean, I get there. Right. What happened is they got fed up with me and Russ playing did the rants. I, I'm shocked. I can't imagine how that could be. How could anyone get fed up with you, George? Yeah, me ask my wife. Or anyone that you work with. But you know. no, my wife. My wife already knows the cover story. Just. <laughs> Forty-five seconds, my dear, and another crowning achievement is about to go on the air. Excuse me while I grab the handle and pull this one out. And welcome to On Target Radio. I'm David Lombardo. I'm Gretchen Fritz. Tonight, David and I will be talking about public education and Common Core with our guest, August Duzer, a retired teacher who was running in the 2016 election for Illinois' first congressional district, and Cedric Crenshaw, a grassroots activist in the area of education and former candidate for Illinois State Senate. So be sure to give us a call at 312-642-5600 or go to Facebook, like our page, On Target Radio, and ask a question there. Uh, a few days ago, cast adrift in a sea devoid of intellectual stimulation, I found myself watching YouTube. For those of you who have been living under a rock for the past couple of years and have no clue about YouTube, I can best sum it up by saying it is, at its very core, intellectual dental floss. Any substance that existed prior to viewing YouTube will be plucked out and replaced with slack-jawed disbelief. 
To be fair, there are some taboos, such as sexual content, threats, nudity, hateful content, assuming you're a conservative disagreeing with a liberal, and a few others that may or may not involve domesticated animals. But for all intents and purposes, anyone can video pretty much anything and put it on YouTube for the entire world to see. And they do so with mind-numbing regularity. I've learned some interesting things by watching YouTube. For instance, don't try to ride a skateboard off a roof into a pool. Don't look down the barrel of a shotgun that has just misfired. And trying to befriend a grizzly bear in Alaska is uh, pushing your luck. YouTube is a bit like watching a train wreck. You abhor what you're seeing, but you can't take your eyes off of it. And so it was that I stumbled across a teacher explaining common core math to a reporter. The teacher was explaining how to calculate 9 plus 6. She told the reporter, and I quote, Our young learners might not be altogether comfortable thinking about what 9 plus 6 is, but they're quite comfortable thinking about their friend 10. About their friend 10? Seriously? Common Core encourages young children to have imaginary friends named 10? My early childhood imaginary friend's name was Bambi and she was 15, which coincidentally is the answer. I mumbled to no one in particular. The teacher continued saying, we're going to decompose the number six and we know six is made up of parts. When did physiology cross over to math? Pretty much everything that decomposes is made up of parts and Common Core was beginning to smell just like them. She went on. One of the parts is the number one, and the other part is a five, she said. The answer is 15, for heaven's sake, I shouted. We are now going to anchor our nine to the one, she said, while drawing a circle around a nine and a one on a piece of paper. Now, what ensued were drawings and numbers swirled together as if conjured up by a surrealist painter on LSD. I don't know how the teacher kept a straight face during the roughly minute it took her to diagram and explain how to derive 15 from a 6 and a 9. An answer that I instantly knew without any drawings, explanation, or help from an imaginary friend named Ted. To say Common Core math was contrived would be like saying Hillary Clinton has expressed an interest in running for president. What's most interesting is yet in another YouTube video about Common Core, the teacher is telling a student that it's okay she didn't get the correct answer to the addition problem. It was okay because she knew the correct process. Which brings two thoughts to mind. First, how can a process be correct if it gives you the wrong answer? It's like saying, I know the patient died, but it's okay. We use the proper surgical procedure. And second, I hope to God that child does not go into accounting. <laughs> Meanwhile, I think I'm going to go back and revisit Bambi to see how the past 60 years have treated her. But the truth is, Bambi, like Common Core, is of no value whatsoever in the real world. Her worth exists only as a fantasy in the delusional mind that created her. And that question is my rant for you. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how they're, they're supposedly seeking to make things easier for children, and that it really is only making it harder for the children and the parents. Because the parents can't even help their kids with their homework, and it doesn't make any sense. It, it's, it's stunningly uh, obnoxious from what I've read. Augie, you, you were a teacher for how long? 22 years. Okay, and did you, did you fall under the Common Core days? Uh, no, the Common Core came uh, after I retired. However, uh, I was used to the ISAT and uh, the state goals of the ISAT. And uh, that was a uh, test based on comparison as opposed to this is supposed to be a, a performance based assessment. Well, I, I've read, and I taught high school but way the 70s, long ago, so it was way before any of this even was thought of. But I read that this test goes like six hours or something, and, and the one I read, had it had 24 questions. And people would sit around, students would sit around for like an hour with nothing to do. Well, there's a, there's a couple parts uh, to this. There's actually two uh, math parts, one with a calculator, one, one without a calculator. Uh, the students have to show all their work, and they get an hour and a half. And uh, I still sub, and I talked to many of the students and to get their input. And uh, they said that the, the test was harder than the ISAT, 
and it was more of a uh, critical skills thinking test, and they had plenty of time left over. It, it just it strikes me as amazing of things I've read. You listen to the on radio, this is AM 560, the answer. Give us a call, 312-642-5600. If your kids have a problem with this, Sandra, you, you have some pretty strong feelings about Common Core. Now, you, you ran for... Um, state Senate. For state senate, um, and you have some pretty strong feelings. What what's your take on this whole thing? Well, my take is that parents should be given the right to opt their children out of the state mandated test, the park test, because of the the ten to fourteen hours that this test is, requires of children, which is developmentally in, inappropriate in and of itself. Um, but because right now children currently have the right to refuse to take these tests but parents have no voice. So we are advocating, myself and thousands of other parents across the state and across the country, uh, for an opt-out bill, uh, House Bill 306, which would actually give us a voice so that we could opt our children out of this testing. Park is developmentally inappropriate. Uh, it steals way too much time from our teachers that should be used for instruction. Uh, it's also technologically flawed. Uh, it's it's computer based, it's computer driven. Uh, there have been tons of problems with that. Um, so th there's just a myriad of problems with the park test itself. But again, it's not just about park; it's about the misuse and the overuse of standardized testing. I, I just read in, in the well, I read this morning. It was yesterday's paper. I'm a day behind. That, and I forget what state this is, but there is a county where the superintendent of schools has said to all the principals. The students will take it or we suspend them. Now, in the next county over, the superintendent has said, it's up to the students whether they want to take it or not. And there's like this ongoing war down there about why can they do it and we can't do it because nobody wants to take it there either. And is there no is there no rules to this thing? Are there no laws that govern this stuff? People are doing whatever they want to do. Well, that's part of the problem here in Illinois, uh, that there's no clear, concise guidance in terms of the policy and procedures that go into effect if a child does refuse to take these tests. It's kind of left up to the school districts and so it's complete chaos out there. There are children, there are reports of children that have been physically and uh, psychologically abused because they refuse to take these tests. So we really need an opt-out law which would just give us clear, concise guidance on okay, what should happen if a child's parents opt them out of this testing. This bill will require that those students receive either some type of educational enrichment or instruction, and that there would be no negative impact to schools, districts, teachers, or parents. It's real common sense. We have Alan on the line. Alan, you got literally 30 seconds, so we got to go to a break. Go ahead. Well, it, it's they're, they're learning to feel good about themselves, which I could care less about. Thank, thanks a lot, Alan. I appreciate it. I, I, that's the thing that I just saw today about a teacher told the kid. I, I know he got the answer wrong, but you understood the process. We're gonna have to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about. Um, how do teachers feel about this? That's a big deal, I think. How do they feel about it? All that and more on On Target Radio when we return. And you are listening to AM560, The Answer. One down. Are we good to go with the second one then? How do teachers feel about it? <clears throat> I know. It goes fast, doesn't it, Augie? Yeah, it's quick. It goes quick. Very quick. And Gretchen will tell you I'm a shark. I don't allow a nanosecond of silence, right? Yeah. She'll open her mouth and speak, and that's <laughs> you, too long. Yeah, if you take too long to breathe, you'll fill up that space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He does. It's true. I'm guilty of it. I, I breathed too slowly, and he just jumped in and started talking. <laughs> in addition to the fact that I often forget that I told you to bring it back. So I'm, you want to do India, or you want me to do it? Oh, I didn't bring my, I can look at my copy. You don't have to, it's right here. All no, you have to change the name. I changed it. 
I made it make more sense. Do you want me to go get it? Well, would you like to bring it in, Marshall? Curious, Are you no, doing another see. intro on this one? Huh? Are you doing another intro on this one? Uh, or are you just going to come out with a question? Well, no, I will. Well, first we're going to do a, a commercial. So we'll come back from break, we'll do the commercial, and then uh, it's a live read, a place where we can meet. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And um, and then I'll go, uh, you know, we're back with more on Tiger Radio, and uh, we're talking about uh, how, how do teachers feel about Common Core? Yeah. <clears throat> I think Alan may have been looking for partial credit for partial inebriation. <laughs> 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 Maybe uh, maybe John will call. Maybe. He hasn't called lately. He hasn't. Maybe he's off his meds. Actually, he called last week, but he called at like 9.53. Oh, did he? So I had a 30-second conversation with him. Did he sound lucid? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> he's on his meds. Okay, you're going to bring it back. I will stand three feet from the microphone, so I cannot make a mistake. <laughs> <coughs> Actually, I'm going to promo the tickets after you do the commercial. Okay. <clears throat> Concealed Carry Expo, Washington County Fairground, West Bend, Wisconsin. Okay. May, uh, <coughs> I don't have to say much. Just I got two. I got tons of tickets. <clears throat> What's up? Anything big? <laughs> She's a little bit. Oh, yeah, that wasn't what, oh my god. I don't know. For some reason, it's taking her measurements in that early short line. Okay. And we have spectators. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Sweating. You're bringing it back, not me. Yeah. <clears throat> Conversation on gun control, concealed carry, freedom of speech, and other rare meat issues that affect you. And we're back with more on Target Radio. If you love great Indian cuisine like we do, then you must experience Gaylord Fine Indian Cuisine in Schaumburg. David and I love Gaylord and eat there before the show. For over 38 years, 18 in Schaumburg, Gaylord has served an extensive menu of fine Indian cuisine. <coughs> Signature dishes include tandoori jingo jumbo prawns chicken tikka masala, or the tangy and hot South Indian specialty, ram vindaloo. All dishes are prepared using only quality fresh ingredients, including the elaborate 1295 lunch buffet that's made fresh each morning. Manager Darren DeBreo invites you to come early when they open at 1130 weekdays and noon on weekends to taste the freshness for yourself. I recommend you skip breakfast and save your appetite. And Gaylord can accommodate business meetings or events for up to 60 people. Gaylord Fine Indian Cuisine is on Mall Drive, just south of the Woodfield Mall. Call 847-619-3300 or visit GaylordIL.com. Gaylord Fine Indian Cuisine is the Mercedes of Fine Indian Dining. And uh, we got a special going on. Uh, last week, was last week we had them on, right? Yeah. Concealed carry? Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a whole bunch of tickets. So, uh, first come, first serve. Two tickets if you call. Uh, second caller. We can't go too deep in the numbers because people don't want to call. Well, right. Yeah. Second caller, two tickets to the Concealed Carry Expo May 8th, 9th, and 10th at Washington County Fair Park in West Bend, Wisconsin. Uh, second caller, and let's do fourth call. Second and fourth caller, Georgie, just lay it on them, okay? That'll be it, and we'll send you off those tickets. Um, let's talk now. We've been talking about uh, Common Core. And you're listening to AM 560, the answer. Give us a call, 312-642-5600. The question I have is, teachers are the ones kind of stuck in the middle. Okay, superintendents can say what they want, principals can say what they want. It's the teacher, that's where the rubber meets the road. They're between the administration and the student. How, what kind of reaction do you get from teachers? Well, my son is a teacher, uh, my oldest son, and uh, this is the breakdown that he gave me. Uh, the PART test is a performance-based assessment, and it comes in three sections. The first is fiction or literature with two stories, passages with tiered questions, like what is theme, what supports that theme. It's supposed to be a test that develops your critical thinking skills. So I don't know if your analogy of the one plus nine was an appropriate example, but 
Plus a math one. Yeah, yeah. Right. You lost me at one plus nine. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I you know. <laughs> The thing that irritated me about that when I was watching, have you seen it? I think you no, I didn't it? see it. It's, it's on YouTube. And the thing that irritates me is the answer is very clearly 15. It doesn't take a genius to figure this out, and it takes her a minute just to explain how to do it with diagrams. Teachers, are th I think, are split on this uh, half for and half against. A lot of teachers think it's you're just teaching to the test, and other uh, teachers uh, think it's a good thing, and it's, it's a, a form of measurement to see where students are and what they're learning and what they uh, they need to be learning. Well, I, I guess I'm, I'm struck by the fact, uh, and I, I didn't really know this, but I sort of uh, picked this up a little along the way. What you said, Senator, there's no, there's no common denominator here. One county can do it one way. Another county can do it another way. I mean, is it even, why are we even doing this? That's a good question. What really is the purpose of the test? Because I can tell you the purpose of the test is not to inform teachers for their instruction. It's not to help kids. These tests won't even be available, the results, until next fall after kids have already gone to the next grade. Teachers are not allowed to see the test, none of the questions, and the ones who administer the test, they have to sign security agreements. So even if they do see some of the questions and say maybe that some of the questions are confusing or they're wrong, they cannot discuss it. So really, what is the purpose of this? It's to rate teachers, schools, and to rate uh, students. It's not to help the kids and to help the teachers. Is there money going to be tied to this if you score low or something? Well, Chicago was told that if they didn't take the part testing, they were going to not get uh, some federal funding. Is that right? I don't know how true that, that is. is not, that is not correct. There is no legal language at all in the No Child Left Behind waiver or in the statute that ties our participation in these tests to losses of federal funding or any type of punitive uh, what losses of funding. What's the axe that they're holding over the neck of the schools to do this? In my humble opinion, it has to do with money. The money that is made by the testing companies like Pearson, uh, they have billions invested in these tests. Why would the school care? Why, as a, as a superintendent of schools, why would I care if a company makes money off of my school? Why would, well, the super, supposedly, some superintendents got together and developed this test. And, and there might be some uh, financial motivation in it, but let me use this as an example. Every state has not adopted this test. I, yeah, I've heard Let, Let's use, uh, in, in every state, you have a different blood alcohol level. So let's say that 0 .05 should be the legal uh Right. Term for, for being, being, being inebriated. Being inebriated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, why don't we have that as a federal law that's passed down to the state laws? Because you can't be 0.10 in one state and 0.05 in another state. So there has to be some cohesiveness. Well, I, on YouTube, I don't think I found any. I, and I take it back. I found one YouTube thing that was said, oh, this is a wonderful thing. And of course, it was by some group that help develop the thing. But everything else I found was complaining about it. And the one teacher, I like, it was really funny, who was trying to be positive and explain it. It took her a minute to explain how to add nine and six. And I'm thinking, if this is the way kids are going to do it, these people are going to be doing brain surgery. I mean, you know. Well, I think you have to understand the frustration of, of teachers. You know, when you have a, a school improvement day, this is uh, generally what is done. You work on a curriculum uh, and you're supposed to have your lesson plans regulated to what's going on. So it's, this has been changed over the years many, many times. You know, now it's, now it's this core curriculum. Before it was state standards for the ISAT. So, you know, we need to get together and do what's in the best interest of the children. Well, and you know, I remember when I was teaching high school, this is 74, 75, my field was aviation, so that, that was never on the SATs. But, but I remember teachers in, in the, like at lunch or in the teacher's lounge telling new teachers, you gotta make sure to teach this, you gotta make sure to we, It's just part of the system. They teach to the tests that the kids have to take, which takes away from the creativity of being a teacher. This is on Target Radio. This is AM 560 The Answer. Give us a call. 312-642-5600. Have your kids taken this ridiculous test? 
I don't know what to say. A, a very, very dear friend of mine who I uh, invited on the show, but she said, oh, I know I can't be on the radio. I get flustered. I don't know what to say. And, but she, she just flat out said she hates it. She just hates it. She's been teaching for many years, um, and she said it's just a waste. It's, it takes away from actually teaching kids. And she's very, was very adamant about it, which is why I wanted her on the show. But she chickened out. If you're listening, you're a chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is part of the problem because the teachers, part of their evaluation will be based on these tests. So it's only logical that many of them are teaching to the test. So I, I have great sympathy for them, but this is the system sure. that we've set up. Well, and, and that, you're absolutely right. And it was true even when I was teaching. There were other tests, but there were ACTs, SATs, and like that. And if your students routinely did poorly on them, they look at you. They go, how come your students are the ones that get low scores? That's the reality of it. And I, and I don't know if it's good or bad, but that's the reality. But the other side of the coin that I, you know, that I got to ask is this. Most educational programs, teachers, are they have tenure. Uh, I taught elementary school briefly, I taught high school, I was a college professor for years, department head, and I was an academic dean. And tenure is a big deal. And it, it's, to me, twisted and convoluted, because once you get tenured, there's almost nothing you can do to get rid of them. There's no standard of, you know, you got to have students who pass, nothing. I guess I'm saying it's nice if there's something that you can hold up and say, look, this is what we expect. And you got to be within a standard deviation or so of this thing. That sort of doesn't exist at all. I don't know. Was this an attempt to do that? You could say it was an attempt by by some groups and some organizations to make teacher evaluations what they claim to be better. Um, I can't argue that one way or the other. What what it should be, but I know this. I would hesitate to base any teacher's evaluation or, or rank any school or rank any child on a flawed test like the PARP test. Well, I, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right at all. And that's why, that's why parents need the right to opt out, to actually stand up not only for their kids, but stand up for teachers as a way to have a voice to say, no, I don't think this is right. This isn't fair. Do we have any idea how these tests were tested? Because usually when you roll out a new test, Validated. there's been, right, they've done like basically focus groups. You know, it's been tested on children of, can anyone do this correctly? PARC has not been shown to be valid or reliable. Okay. No. Yeah. That's, it's, what, it's not. that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and there you go. We're right all over again. Uh, we don't have anything, so we'll use this, but it really isn't any good to begin with. We're going to come back. No yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're going to come back with more on Target Radio after this, and we're going to talk just a little bit about what is the environment for all of this within the schools. You're listening to On Target Radio. This is AM560, The Answer. No, we're not. We're going to talk about behavioral issues, not the environment. Whoops. <laughs> Oops. Oops. I read the wrong one. You've had two callers. Yeah. But the second one was Peggy. Oh, yeah. So we still have two was sets of tickets. Was it another religious experience? It always is with Peggy. Yeah. I have no problem with religious experiences. I just I, have a problem with religious over, experiences. Over the years, George, I've guessed that. Is that a problem? Is that related to education? He's the son of a minister. She was asking what Common Core was. Oh, okay. Very, very un... She's disconnected. Peggy, uh, <coughs> Peggy hears voices and... Um, the latest casualty. Uh, what was it she did that one time? Well, she called up and she was talking about the prophecy that, that she heard about it at, yeah. a, at like a Xerox was, convention or something. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was a Catholic event. I don't know why that was. I was like really surprised that it had prophecies at a Catholic Yeah, I think she was probably... Everything was foretold in the Bible. She said it's peyote booth and it wasn't really related to the Catholic convention. Then a coyote came out of the hills. Find your soulmate, baby. Yeah, what are talk about the environment. So tell me about what the environment is. Well, the environment in the school, if, if, if your school improvement days are all about preparing the students for testing, okay. it creates a little bit of a climate that is stressful. Can we get, we're not going to get seven minutes out of that. So this is it. This is a good place to put in you then. Okay. Right. When we come back, oh, okay. we'll put yeah. you in. 
So that'll give us five minutes, and that'll be more doable. When you did talk about the ticket sales, you didn't actually give the phone number. So, Peggy? No, when you talked about the tickets, you didn't give the phone number. Oh, okay, so I'll do it again. you may just, yeah, just throw it All out. Right. Say we have one left or whatever, and I'll give it to the next two people who call. Okay, so I will bring it back then and do that, and I'll, I'll hit you. Okay. Okay, I'll well, hit you. Don't hit No. Hit the button. I'll hit the button. <laughs> I can hit the screen. It works for the first time in what four months. Not if you try to get over it to hit her. <clears throat> if I yeah. push hard, oh, I'll right, hit on it. I, I'm looking at Augie. I think Augie just kicked your ass. Or, uh, <laughs> Gretchen can kick my ass. So that there's no, you know, there's no surprise. <laughs> I I do not resort to physical violence. I just pull the trigger. Okay. I find it's it's much shorter. It's very direct and to the point. See, okay? that's a nose that's been in a couple of fights. Yeah. Have you ever seen a you power just, point? You just get it? old man bubble nose. Yeah. Yeah. Me? Yeah. In WC Fields. Can you imagine yeah. how big it would be if you were a drinker? If, uh, if, uh, if somebody said in one of the WC Fields things, it was a kid, he goes, Daddy, look at that man's nose. I wish I had a bag of nickels that big. <laughs> There was, nice. there was one, my dad says this all the time, there was a WC Fields movie where there's a young woman who, who kind of thought he was cute. And, and, she, and her mother says something about him being a drinker. She goes, he didn't get that nose playing ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> William Claude Dukenfield, what a funny guy. The original curmudgeon. So, you probably didn't see, um, I don't know. We saw this conversation on Facebook this week. Um, his friend, he's a member of the club, um, Chuck Mattingly. He mentioned some. Yeah, the, he mentioned. The, been here. Okay. He mentioned the story of the woman who shot herself accidentally because she got some hot brass down her cleavage. She got an empty shell casing down her cleavage when she was shooting, and she didn't put the gun down before she tried to yeah. get it out, and and she shot herself. I'm not exactly sure where she shot herself. I would, I'm going for the cleavage. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was shoulder. Uh, um, and, and Chuck Mattingly said, you know, he was he was talking about that, and, and I said, oh, I, I said I've had hot brass down my shirt before, and it's not pleasant, but you're shooting, you know, suck it up, Buttercup. It happens, you know. <laughs> and he goes, I would help you with that, <laughs> and I said, David Lombardo would help you with getting your fingers broken. <laughs> oh, you know a guy, Dave? <laughs> I write to check. You think I get some respect? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just for that alone. Eric Kellis and what? calling, but he's want to stir the pot. Yeah, well, we got a what? A Eric Kellis. He said he would call him, but he want to stir the pot. Oh well, Eric Come is on, Eric it. is a, he's not a teacher, but he's right. Uh, he's tell him, stir it. Yeah, tell him to call in. Okay. Absolutely. Anybody who heard you, he's probably watching. If you're listening, well, watching, watching this thing. call in. It would be appropriate time, too, because what we're going to do is talk about... Um, yeah, so there is a judge in the county behavioral issues. issues. Behavioral issues. This is three, right? Yeah. 35. Yeah. Right. So many save so much. I bring it back, I throw it to you. All right, we got another set of tickets to give away. Give us a call, 312-642-5600, if you want two tickets to the Concealed Carry Expo May 8th, 9th, and 10th, what we talked about last week. It's at Washington County Fair Park, West Bend, Wisconsin, which is basically Milwaukee. So it's about, if anywhere in Chicago, it's about a two-hour drive. But it's a really good deal, uh, and it's two free tickets, and you can't argue with that. 312-642-5600. And now we're going to do a little shift. This is a quarterback sneak, and we're going to go with, what Gretchen does. This year's Clyde Howell NRA Youth Shooting Sports Camp will be June 26 to 28 at the ISRA range in Bonfield. The camp is for young people ages 10 to 16. 
Now B is just $150, which includes all meals and ammunition. To sign your child up for the Clyde Howell NRA Youth Shooting Sports Camp, go to saferusanfp.org and click on Clyde Howell or use the link on our Facebook page. Please contact your Illinois State Senator to let them know you oppose Senate Bill 1564. This bill would undermine the conscience protections of all health care providers in the state, including pregnancy resource centers. SB 1564 chips away at conscience protections for health care providers which have been protected by Illinois law for nearly 20 years. Contact your Illinois Senator right away and encourage them to oppose SB 1564. Illinois Senate Bill 1858 is scheduled for its third reading soon. This bill would ban items collected not only by hunters and sportsmen, but many others. SB 1858 would ban articles, so this is the ivory ban, the, that part was left out inadvertently, <laughs> ban articles such as jewelry, musical instruments less than 40 years old, guns and knives less than 100 years old, and other items that are inlaid with ivory. While you could pass family heirlooms to legal beneficiaries, you could not sell your personal property. It includes severe penalties and fines for persons found guilty of selling ivory, ivory products, rhinoceros horns, and similar items. Furthermore, this bill authorizes the IDNR to confiscate these items and destroy them at their discretion. Call your Illinois Senator today and tell them to you oppose SB 1858. To find your Senator's contact information, go to www.ilga.gov, and I also put a link on our Facebook page. The weather is heating up, and so is the class schedule. The following Safer USA classes are all at our office in Waterman. Saturday, May 9th, NRA Basic Shotgun, taught by Pat Donaldson. Saturday and Sunday, May 9th and 10th, Illinois Conceal Carry 1. This 16-hour class will be taught by David and Gretchen and meets the training requirements for Illinois Conceal Carry, as well as Florida, Arizona, and Utah. Saturday, May 16th, Long Range Rifle, taught by Ed Janko. Saturday, May 16th, Tactical Pistol 1 and 2, taught by David. Saturday, May 16th, Illinois Conceal Carry 2, for those who have an exemption for the first eight hours, taught by Gretchen. Sunday, May 17th, NRA Basic Pistol, taught by David. To sign up for classes, go to saferusa.com and click on Register. So, it's on Target Radio, AM 560, The Answer. Uh, our number is 312-642-5600. Give us a call. Is your child taking or not taking this nutball test. It must be an interesting world. Um, you have kids of all different types. I mean, you have some that are essentially ADD. You've got some really high learners. Just the behavioral issue of kids taking a standardized test that goes literally a whole day, basically, and there's times when they're just sitting there doing nothing. I mean, that's got to be a nightmare. Well, Dave, let me tell you this. As an educator, when I, I taught special education, my students had emotional conditions and learning disabilities. And my students were able to pass the ISAT math, and uh, a portion of them would pass the ISAT uh, language arts test. Without a friend named Ted. I don't, yes. I don't think testing in and of itself is wrong. And I think what we have to do is wait and see how this uh, all turns out because we never got the scores for the ISATs until the next year after right. anyway. And there's a there's an extra component to this test, which is going to be taken uh, shortly, called the end of the year, to uh, go along with the first portion of the test. So uh, I, I'd like to see how it all turns out. How it all shakes out. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, somebody said to me I was talking to today, they said, it's better than nothing, which is kind of a sad thing to do. We say that about our legislators in Washington, but I've heard that. You know, well, at least we got something to judge them by. I think there was a backlash. You remember, there was a time when students couldn't do anything wrong. You know, oh, it's okay, Johnny. I know that the numbers didn't come out. I know you don't know how to do a sentence, but we don't want to hurt your self-esteem. Remember that? That whole... I think that was a little, a little before our time. Okay, <laughs> fine. It was time. a little before your that time. That was in the Civil Thanks. War day. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I'm on one side and everybody else is on the other side jousting with me all the time. I just, uh, George, we need to lock the yeah. door. Don't Torches. Like any of you. <laughs> I don't get it. All right, just for that, we're going to take another break. When we come back, 
I want to talk a little bit, though, about the environment in the school, this whole issue of environment in the school, uh, because that, I think, uh, plays a big part. So we'll be back with more on Target Radio. You're listening to AM 560, The Answer. <laughs> You were going pretty fast there. I thought you were going to miss it. <laughs> I, uh... Did we talk about New York already? No, I wanted to make a point about, um, no, the back question New York. Okay. Well, they, I, you know, I did see something in the paper about New York, but I didn't have time to read it. No. It was in uh, this morning's paper. They're doing something. Well, this is the third year that New York is administering the heart test. So we really we don't have to wait to see they have what's going to history that. So they did very nice. The first year, you know, there were a few few refusals. Yeah. Last year, 60,000. This year so far, over 190,000. And have they said anything? Is there any word? Any word? About what how it came out? How they, what yeah, was the outcome? They're, they're still refusing. They're, they're, still about it? they're still testing. Yeah. I mean, the parents was the, are. Was there any know, growth? Outraged. Was there any growth in terms of the test? Yeah. No, because something like between sixty and seventy percent of the kids fail the test. Oh, well, and that get works this. Out well. <laughs> they don't. They don't set the cut scores, which they use to judge who passes and who fails, until after the kids take the test. So. So you're taking great. a test having no idea what it takes to pass the test. It's pretty much. Well, basically, they're grading on a curve. That's what. That's what grading on a curve is. Well, they're deciding after Only the fact that they say sure. we want this many kids to fail and this many to uh, so-called pass. And what happens is the companies like Pearson that make tests, well, they also make the remediation materials. Isn't so, that convenient? Is yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't that convenient? <laughs> that yeah. sounds right. So, uh, so I'm going to get my plug in here for Congress. Right? Uh, in the last one, the next one uh, is next to last. We'll talk about oh. environment. Okay. At, yeah. at 54. Oh, yeah. Gretchen already did her Yeah, thing. she did her yeah. thing. So you get to do that. Do you have anything yeah. you want to plug? Or you That's why right. I did it early. I just wanted to plug what people can do. Okay. So we'll start with you. This is not the next one, but the one after this. Okay. We'll start with you because that, I assume, is going to be fairly short. And then we'll go to on. And we need about 30 seconds to get out of it. Maybe 40 seconds. So... When I start the clapping my hands, yeah. when will we we'll get to the end? Fifth? Yeah. Not the next one, but after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Eric is a chicken. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't talk. I didn't do the live read. I, That's right. Dude. Who manned up You said, cheated. I want to learn this. Yeah, I do. I, I will. I will do it. Uh huh. I will do it. The restaurant will be out of business by the time he does it. Thirty seconds. Oh. Thirty seconds for more glory. Here we go. So the question is environment. Tell me what I'm going to ask about environment. The environment of the school climate, I guess, would be the best. Because listen, kids, ne support, just kids never like testing. When you ask okay. a kid how was the test, right. oh god, we that that test. I can take it. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a climate, it. and the teachers have to deal with, you know, oh, we're, you're making us teach to the. And we're back with more on Target Radio. Give us a call, 312-642-5600. You're listening to AM560, The Answer. The topic has been uh, just public education and Common Core. And uh, one of the questions that I, that I want to ask is, from a, a, a school's perspective, I'm assuming that there are some schools that are fighting this, the teachers don't like it, even the administration doesn't, and some that do. What, what, what is the environment like in schools these days? Well, I think it's a difficult environment because some of the teachers feel that you're testing, uh, you're teaching to the test, and other teachers, you know, think you could teach to the test to teach students to be critical thinkers at the same time. You know, you use your time uh, and school improvement days. You're you're going through the core curriculum and you're making your lesson plans accordingly to try to help the students do well on their test. But again, I say you can you can teach the students' critical thinking skills so they can be successful on the testing. Is, this doesn't cut across all disciplines. What is math, English, what else is in there? Math and language arts. Right. Ma math and language arts. That's all there is so far. Yes. God only knows what's going to do with the English language. 
Oh, and have a history. Have we got? We haven't gotten the history yet. No. But that'll be I'm good. sure it'll be revisionist history. I, do we know who actually writes this? You said somebody said superintendents wrote. Is that true? What, what What I heard was that a group of superintendents got together and put together this test, uh, along with uh, the Pearson Company, and of course someone's making uh, money from it, and. Uh, my problem is, and I think a lot of teachers' problem is, let's get it down to one test that's going to be the benefit of all students that you could go from Illinois to Texas and you could figure out what grade a, a child should be in based on their capabilities. Because you don't want to see anybody left behind and like with no child left behind. The document in it itself may have not been perfect, but you have to have a starting point to go from. Here's the thing. I Googled Common Core and I put objectives. You can't find out. Nobody says we're doing this because. There's no like reason for doing it. And yet all the schools across the United States are either they hate it or they love it. They're going psycho over it one way or the other. But nobody has said to me, what is it actually the end. Why, if you don't even get the results, okay. what do you bet? Where's the benefit? Who's getting right. anything? Right. We've been sold the bill of goods that this is so that all of our kids learn what they're supposed to learn across the country, but we know that's not the case. None of this is constitutional. Teachers were not involved in the crafting of these standards. This was done behind closed doors uh, with with foundations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, you know, billionaires who can throw lots of money around, uh, being able to uh, influence these standards and what, what kids learn. So the entire process was top down and not bottom up. That's not the way our system is supposed to work. That's why we see such a backlash. And I just want to point out one thing from the last segment. We don't have to wait to see what's going to happen. We can just look to states like New York. This is their third year implementing the park. The first year there were a few refusals, the second year, last year, 60,000. This year they have so far over 190,000 students refusing to take the park test. Their parents have said, absolutely not, this has got to stop. They take way too many tests. We don't need this one. It's, no matter where you look, I have not been able to find, and I, I really only look for one day, but the better part of the day, I cannot find any justification for doing it. Well, the Common Core, they, they claim it's readiness for college and career. That's what they claim. But I don't see any, like like Sedra said, I don't see anything to back that up. There's nothing that I've seen in any of the curriculum that actually backs that up. We got Mary, or Mar, Mar? Yeah. Mary. Mary's on the phone uh, talking about Common Core. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. So that's an interesting observation, Mary. Go ahead. Really? That's a very interesting observation, Mary. Thank you. I appreciate that. It, okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's interesting because on this show we frequently talk about how the federal government has taken over law enforcement. They've actually come out and said they think law enforcement should come under federal jurisdiction. There is, that's an interesting observation. Um, and it's not one that's difficult to believe under this administration because everything flows towards the White House today. 
They're given, I mean, cops are becoming federal agents. you got cameras everywhere. I, she may be getting close to the and, and the testing bears out exactly what Mary said, because when you look at the park test, it's generally written at least two grade levels above the grade being tested. All right, well, we got to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to wrap it all up. Um, we'll be back with more on Target Radio, and you're listening to AM560, The Answer. Okay. So, was she saying that? that they're making the test harder? The test, yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, the curriculum. Okay. When we come back, we will, <coughs> uh, I think what we'll do is, since you've done your thing, we'll, Cedric, you can do your little thing, and then Augie, you've got several, a couple minutes, anyway. Yeah. All right. But when I start flapping my wings, yeah. okay, because our the out takes a good 30 seconds. Yeah. Time goes by fast when you're having fun, right? Yeah. Wow. And when you're doing radio. <laughs> we need an hour. We need a two hour show. Well, Gangler's already sitting in his chair back here. If you have some duct tape, we can tie him up and then we can take the second hour. You know, I wish you would leave your personal proclivities to yourself. <laughs> I don't have a good comeback for that. <laughs> <laughs> on this day, I stumped George. I like it. Once, a, once in a year and a half. <laughs> in the Shut him up. Exactly. Yeah. One minute. And Eric, you're a pansy. <coughs> One minute. I got that's an eternity. This is radio. Yeah. Do a whole show in a minute. Mm -hmm. All right. What can I say that'll make George bleed the last two minutes of the show? There's all sorts of things you can say. I only have 16 seconds. <laughs> yeah, but you can keep riding that button. Right? Yeah, but I, if I hit it once, it dumps eight oh, seconds. If I hit it another time, it dumps eight seconds. Ah. And then you're live, which means you're going to commercial if you're intentionally <laughs> doing it. Then I'll just take it off the air. Like they did He's not chicken. He just doesn't have enough energy to deal with this on Sunday night. He doesn't have enough energy. Well, he says, I'm not chicken, just don't have enough energy this late on Sunday night. Or Sunday. Sorry. And we're back with more on Target Radio. I guess the, the question now at the end of the show is, what can parents do about this? What are their options? Zedra, you, you have some thoughts on that. Yes. Number one, if, if you support parental rights, and that's what this really is about, please call your state representative and tell them to support House Bill 306, the opt-out bill. If they're already supporting it, thank them. Also, call Governor Rauner. He's issued a veto threat already please call him tell him to support parental rights and lastly please link up with other parents uh, and concerned citizens in your area and around the state and the country social media and the like let's let's spread the word and let's support each other and if if you need information on how to help your child to refuse these tests or you're, you're, if you don't know what to do please link up with others on social media and get some support uh, well, I, I, and I think Mary really hit a point on this because the reason we have school boards is to have local input into what students learn. And, and that, that is being taken away from, from the local people, and, and that's wrong. Education should be in the hands of parents. Augie, this is your big moment. Now you can do it. All right, folks. First, I want to thank uh, David Gretchen for having us on the show. And uh, I am running for uh, Congress in the 1st Congressional District. I'm having a... Um, Fundraiser at Freddy's at, in Bridgeport at 31st and Union, May 31st, 5.30 to 8.30. I'd like to thank a couple of people for helping me out uh, in my quest uh, to become a congressman, Ed Ronkowski, uh, Byron Zawaski, and my good friend, uh, Freddy Bertucci. What, now, where is that district geographically? It's, it goes all the way from Chicago all the way out to Manhattan. It's a, it's a long scale. It was gerrymandered by yeah. Madigan. It's a long, skinny district that goes north to south. If, it, if it's partially Chicago on the south suburbs, isn't that mostly Democratic? Uh, 
there's a lot of Republicans mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we'll get some crossover votes. Do you want me to loan you a shovel? Maybe we can dig a few up. How about a how about a, a basket of money? <laughs> <laughs> Chicago politics. We yeah, yeah. gotta love it. I love Chicago politics. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know the, the old joke is uh, my grandmother died at ninety four and she voted uh, Republican to the day she died. Now she votes Democratic. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it, it would be a lot funnier if it weren't true, but uh, we wish you good will. The, the um, primary is what? March, March 15th. March 15th. So we'll have to have you on again. We'll, well thank you. We'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try. Vote and... for the Irishman. <laughs> you, you sure you're not a Democrat? Okay, never mind. That's fine. If it were, the bell would have gone off walking through the door. It would have stopped in the middle. It would never allow them on, uh, you know, an AM 560. Uh, okay. Well, I do appreciate both of you being on, and, and I think this is an interesting subject. It certainly isn't something that we solve, um, and it'd be interesting to see how things work out. But I think education belongs in the hands of parents, personally. I was a teacher. I was always very open to this to what parents had to say. Um, I think you have a right to educate your kids. I really do. Cedric and I were discussing before the show some of, some of where they really ultimately want to go with uh, with this Common Core, if you look into it, if you research it, it's really truly frightening. We need to stop it now. Looking to, at curriculum? Uh, it's not even. It's uh, monitoring your children. It's data mining, and um, really? they want to do like biometric monitoring of your children. Biometric? Mm -hmm. They want to um, monitor eye movement, um, perspiration, like almost like a like a lie detector test, perspiration on the skin, pulse, things like that. It's, it's really frightening. Do you hear that? Do you hear that sound? That's George Orwell rolling over yeah. his grave. <clears throat> Unbelievable. All right. Well, it is what it is. And we didn't solve it, but at least I hope you know more. Thank you for listening to Non-Target Radio. Be sure to listen next week when we'll be covering the red meat issues that affect your life. We'd also like to thank August Duzer, Cedric Crenshaw, George Hoffman on the board, Rick Cizak, our social media coordinator, and our sponsors, the Concealed Carry Expo, DS Arms, Gaylord's Fine Indian Cuisine, Illinois State Rifle Association, the Aurora Sportsman's Club, Stone City Kitchen and Bath Design Center, and Safer USA. And thanks, Mike, for making it all happen. Right on the money. Nailed it. Right on the money. <laughs> Down to the last second. I hear the music going like winding out. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> we are good. It's quick. Or lucky. One or the other. Yeah. I don't know which. Wow. Which is why we need the after party. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we still got to come up with a name for that. For what? The after party. Yeah. So, oh, we didn't advertise school? No, we didn't, but that's okay. Crap, only oh.